the perks of living near a riverside is unlimited really like you always get to see nice beautiful riverside views and then there's the fishing yes you can always fish but you know most of the time you only get plastic and then the best part of course the unlimited supply of clear sparkling pristine water and because of all this you know you can't help but be grateful and be blessed that you do this all ye people who live up river thank you for this generous gift of all this garbage but i really do think that something might be wrong with this perfect illusion last year around february i made a vlog on scarcity of water in my town but you know today I wanted to look at scarcity of water from a different perspective. I wanted to see if you know we were creating this, you know, our own scarcity of water. So, uh, with this video, I'm not in any way being insensitive to those people who are facing a huge scarcity of water at this particular moment. I really do hope that the concerned authorities are doing what they can to alleviate your, you know, uh, needs and your scarcity of water. But, you know, uh, where I'm sitting at right now is a small brook that's just a stone's throw away from where I live and you can see the condition of the brook that is in uh, we have been dumping garbage we have been using you know every brook that we have within the down uh, as the garbage dumping site and this is the situation it is in you know the whole landscape of the brook has been taken over by garbage uh, but the thing about these brooks is that they are perennial source of water and even if at this moment at this dry season it's you know the amount of water that's running it's not substantial enough. I believe, you know, yeah, there's enough running water to, you know, sustain a small section of the populace of the town. And, you know, if this was clean, it would have been, you know, really great for us. It would have been great for water for us to use. And if, you know, if you think about it, you know, almost, you know, all the town villages, they take the water from pipelines, from small brooks or rivulets near the village and you know they use it to sustain the villages uh, they use it to meet the, the water needs of the villages and you know this is something that can be implemented i believe in you know cool town as well but you know the damage i don't know the damage that we have done i don't know how long it will take to reverse this anyway i'm not an expert you know in this whole water management thing and this whole rural development thing so uh, i know someone who is an expert so I'm gonna call him up in a bit and you know ask him about you know this whole scarcity of water, have we created it and how we can probably maybe you know turn this kind of brooks into potential sources of water in the days to come. So that that is the condition of the stream that is you know flowing through our place. You know, the really water bad. like really it flows like throughout the year and even in dry season you know the water still there it's perennial yeah so i was thinking if you know the scarcity of water that we have in our town you know it's something that we have created in some ways by ourselves because we are not taking care of the resources that are there you know the water resources that's there yeah see uh in a in, in a condition like uh, the one you are showing me right the stream yeah so uh, if we see uh, if we trace back you know its uh, its source where it is coming the water yeah you know i'll tell you the one problem with this you know if we cannot fight the population to you know have ex exploitation of the brook or the stream right one yeah. thing we can do is we need to come up with a tailor made you know like watershed system i would say okay so that can be in a form of diversion based irrigation and when I say irrigation, it doesn't only mean for the field, but it can be used for drinking water also, right? All right, yeah. So what we can do is, you know, like we can build a kind of tailored, you know, uh, watershed structures at the source, which can be distributed not through the PhD or any other department, but through the community, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. this is this is done by, you know, villages like, uh, exactly. I think yeah. this is done at the village level where they, you know, take the water from a brook somewhere and then the whole village gets the water from there. <laughs> Exactly, especially from the main source, if they can construct, a, like I was saying, a watershed system, a structure, right? Yeah. So, one thing they can do is fish, they don't spoil the water. You know, having a fish, they don't spoil the water. Yeah, no. There can still be a clean water, even if we have small, you know, spring fish or whatever that is, right? Yes, yes, correct. So, a kind of uh, harvesting structures where we can use for the fill, for the drinking purpose also, can be constructed at the source. Then, the, you know, like, 
since it has become very difficult for us to work on the behavior change of the people right now of course we will not give up you know we no, will keep no. trying but sure. you know we need to find immediate solution also right okay so uh so i have a problem with that the thing is you know i'm one of the people that lives you know town river and yeah. the pollution is being started by people that's living up river so even if i do yeah. you know build whatever you're <laughs> saying you know the pollution is already there so how do we deal with that <laughs> see uh, like uh, i will just try to supplement this with the uh, you know the how uh, we see water you know like yeah. let's say if we trace back if we go back to the civilization right uh-huh. mm-hmm. so water is like this too much water we will go away from the place correct no water again we will go away from the place we are staying uh-huh. in search of water yeah. too much is bad too less is again bad right exactly yeah so just like that you know like people will go looking for the water right Correct. one day you know who knows ukhul might shift completely downward mm-hmm. yeah because in search of water we cannot live without water right no no it's no. like same same thing if people know that the source is on top of the river or the the brook like uh, on top of the hills okay yeah and if they have proper access to the you know any time any individual can come and go and settle down or whatever the kind of norms you know like then of course exploitation will be there even if we build the structures you know uh, far away from the village yeah people will still go and explore right uh, <clears throat> exploit it right exactly yeah so when we talk about you know water management and water you know solving the problem of water scarcity we cannot only think of water we need to think of the land and the resources management together all right yeah just thinking of water how to solve it will not solve the problem here no no no, no. yeah so uh, and when we talk about land and when we talk about Uh, water you know first thing that comes to our mind is the management of the commons okay yeah because tell me about it <laughs> yeah so there, there there is a term go you know if you have heard of it uh, by gerrit hardin um it's called the tragedy of the commons yeah yeah i've heard of the term but i don't know what's associated yeah, with so it yeah so this can happen to all kind of the common pool resources which is you know uh, diminishable or which can you know perish like at a quick rate okay but the property that is owned by everybody not just a single person exactly, exactly yeah so when if i want to link this uh, you know like i'll just narrate a, s- a short story how we can manage this right all right sure, sure. so one day you know in a village there were three uh, you know like a uh, shepherd uh-huh. so they were all having five five sheep and they were grazing in one place and it was sufficient throughout the year okay so the first shepherd thought that okay since it's sufficient and there are left over uh, grazing land Yep. I will add five extra. All right. <laughs> so the same thought has been with the other shepherd also, right? Yeah, the other two shepherds as well. Yeah. yeah. So everyone came in with five five extra, and they start grazing, and it and it it finishes like before you know like before yeah, the distributed uh, season, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all the cows that all the you know like the livestock that they have died because they were no sufficient grazing land, right? Okay. So same thing is happening with water because okay. we are not managing the commons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so if you are aware of the eight principles of the management of commons by Eleanor Ostrom. <laughs> so talking like layman terms, right? Come on. <laughs> no, I think it's important because uh-huh. we're yeah, 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 yeah. solving problems, right? Exactly. If we can re- replicate or you know like the successful models which is already there, why should we ignore it? No, 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 that's true. Exactly. Right. Mm. So we can change the way the resources, the things, but the the methodology, the model can be replicated right yes yes correct so i think our people need to be very much aware on the you know principles of the commons how to manage that i think this will solve one big issues of the scarcity that we are facing right now okay wow yeah. that was insightful man <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think like we like need to do at a personal level to you know uh maybe mitigate this scarcity of water that we're facing and what would your message be to you know people who are dumping garbage like indiscriminately in into brooks into rivulets uh yeah see there are so many things that i wanted to say but uh, of course i would say like see we live because the water is living right exactly so and we should make that you know managing this thing is everybody's responsibility that's and true, that's you should true. consider this like you know you grooming yourself okay <laughs> so you don't want to go out like with a torn you know like with a rug you know like with a you know you know improper traces when you have a big event so yeah like when you're joining in public platform right exactly, exactly same thing 
you know, once you start grooming yourself, uh, you know, like grooming your water resource, just like you are grooming yourself. Okay. <laughs> yeah, only then we can get through all this, you know, like uh, clean habit of keeping the brook, you know, the streams, the rivers, everything neat and clean. Okay, that's a really interesting yeah. concept. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, see, everybody should play their own role. Like, for me, I would say, like, I have a farm. Okay. Now I started, you know, like uh, making trenches, like stagger trenches, like small, small holes, continue trenches, and everything. So, so those paddy fields below my farm, okay, they get benefits of the, you know, the physical structures that I have, uh, you know, built in my in my farm, right? Okay. So this kind of small, small things, like I am doing it, and my neighbors are benefiting it. If my neighbors do it. The neighbors will benefit from it, right? Mm-hmm. So this kind of change need change need to be you know built. You know if you really want to uh, solve this kind of issues. Correct, correct. Yeah. So that, that, that that's a little bit you know like a, like more like a lectures, but I think no, not we, a little we, bit. We, that we, was we can, like we can work it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was insightful, man. Thank you so yeah. much. All the best saving like Ukrul people, man. Like you're making masks for everyone, and that's such a noble cause as well. Take yeah, care, man. <laughs> uh, for now, we are making masks, but you know, like a lot of criticisms has been there on masks. Like you, you don't, you cannot simply make masks. You have to do this, do that, do that. But it's better than nothing, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's better to do something than to yeah, not do nothing. Exactly. No, no. See, see, it's like this. You're damn if you do something, and you're damn if you don't do something. So exactly. you, you, you better just do it. All the best, <laughs> yeah. man. Thanks. So, well, thank you so much. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch yeah, up I'll see you soon. soon. Yeah. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Take care. So, guys, this is the reality. You know, just as I was talking about water scarcity. You know, just above me was this whole place, you know, going on. I will talk about water scarcity, but, you know, look at how irresponsible we are. We light, you know, fires wherever we want. We're not even responsible for one matchstick. Look at this. This is heartbreaking. <laughs>